Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Archives, which is a cooperative legacy kind of dungeon crawling game where we are going through basically temples. This is Saint set in Egypt. We are basically trying to, these things belong in a museum as far as we're concerned, and we are trying to uncover mysteries more than anything, and we will be fighting scarabs and scorpions and things along the way. This is on Kickstarter right now, the link for the campaign page is in the description and the corner of the screen too, hopefully, and uh, yeah, you can look at all of the final stuff, this is all prototype stuff, but I think it's going to give you a good idea of what the final thing will be like. Uh, I was paid to make this playthrough, always made that clear at the start of videos where that has happened, and and I recommend you turn on Klingon subtitles. If I've made any mistakes, they will be corrected there, I hope. So I think we can get started now. So this is episode zero of the game. The game does come with, you know, this is just a prototype, but I've got these you know, lovely backpack and things. You see, work in progress. There are these plastic backpacks where you will keep items and uh, maybe bad things throughout the chapters of it. Like your characters can get traumas and stuff when they're injured enough. The components that are specific to each campaign come in these lovely little tuck boxes as well. As I mentioned, it's, it's only prototype, but if the final thing comes with things like this, it will be a lovely little touch. So we are playing episode zero, Broken, which is a kind of tutorial scenario, but it includes you know, all of the elements that you will find in the full game and hopefully spoil you as little as possible because I'll go through the story stuff. You can skip wherever you see the book if you wouldn't like to be spoiled with any of it, but you know, it's, it's, not, it's not out right now. It's out in the future. So I'm playing a two-player game, by the way. It's two to four players with Little Glass Marty. Marty is playing Rebecca Clark, and I am playing Frank Gaspard. Our minis are over here. There are standees included with the prototype as well. The campaign page will tell you what the final game comes with. But I've mentioned that you know a lot of these aren't going to come in this scenario. But look at these lovely, well, <laughs> terrifying minis that uh, come with the game. They're not going to come out there. We have a giant snake. We have Renekton there. I haven't got an enemy card for him. So I'm not sure what his name is, but I'm going to say Renekton. We have the giant scorpion there, and we have <laughs> these little but still deadly snakes, and we have lots of horrible little scarabs there. Hopefully the camera is focusing properly. So we need to turn to the expedition logbook, which is a way of introducing you to the game. Now, it's not final, as I keep saying, it's all prototype stuff, but this is a good idea of what the final thing is going to be like. So we're having an adventure in ancient Egypt, and uh, this is the introduction for it. For many years now, it's been you against the world. You alone believe that ancient Egypt still hides a vast secret, an unbelievable secret. All your attempts to convince Egyptologists around the world have done nothing but make you a laughing stock among your peers. But just as you're seriously considering giving up, your young assistant brings you, miraculously, a dusty old notebook that was found on the desiccated corpse of a tomb robber. He tells you that reading the notebook was thrilling and has firmly convinced him of one thing. The notebook is the key you were missing. Despite your skepticism, you agree to study it. Little by little, you feel hope rising again. Several pages seem to corroborate your theories. If it's authentic, this notebook could help you bring the truth to light. Your truth. You decide to gather all your savings and risk everything to prove your theories. You will mount an expedition and follow the clues in the old notebook. And then, bit by bit, it's going to take us through, you know, learning the game and what the various actions do. And it kind of, it does this in a really nice way in that, you know, the, the places that we're on are designed to teach us the bits one by one. You know, it will just teach us searching and then moving and stuff like that. But we will just go through it. I won't break it up all like that. We are on episode zero right now on the trail of tomb robbers. It has taken you many long months, but you've finally done it. You've had to spend an insane amount of money, recruit a team with backgrounds as impressive as your own, scout out locations, buy supplies and equipment. But the time has come. Your adventure can start. After a mandatory stopover in Cairo to complete the last administrative formalities, which ate up your remaining cash in bribes, you've landed your brand new blimp, the Phileas, near the site mentioned in the notebook. Immediately after supervising the setting up of your camp, you find yourself in the middle of the desert searching the sand with your team. Early in the morning, you uncover a curious object and the entrance to a buried building. And... As you might imagine, this is that buried building, but we're just outside in the sand. We don't know any of this stuff's inside. So we need a stack of fate tokens. Now, this is a little thing that's, you know, I keep saying it's a prototype. This is going to change based on the number of players. At the moment, it's balanced for four. So, yeah, 
some scenarios have been uh, a bit tight on uh, time for us, but yeah, the, the two-player and three-player things are still being worked on, so just bear that in mind. If uh, we fail miserably, if, if nine's not enough, I'll keep going through to the end of the scenario to show you all of it. So, we are just out here on the sand, and our character boards show us the available actions. We're not going to bother with the special action just yet. We can search, we can move, we can attack. There's nothing to attack. We can't move anywhere. We've just got this sand tile and a locked door. So we need to search. So first up, let's search here. I'm going to go first. I'm Frank. And I'm going to search out here. Now this token is the search token. And the, the shape and color and the symbol that's on it are going to determine a card from this episode's deck to tell us what we found here. So I'm going to search through the deck for that card. Actually, I did put it on the bottom of the deck. So there is that card. And so we can see what I have found. We get two actions, by the way. So it's an event. You dig the corpse of a tomb robber out from under the burning sand. In his bag, you find the head of an antique statue. It doesn't look like anything you've ever seen before. Take the card with this symbol. So I will go through the deck and grab this card now. I found a decapitated head, and it's going to tell me to take this card now. So I'll just find that. And you can see it relates to a certain action, and so you'll put it in that slot. There are, you know, weapons that you'll get here that will affect your attack action, for example. So that's why they go in the various areas. And here it is. Defiler. The accusation echoes in your head. A deep unease grips you, and you know deep inside that the only way to get rid of it is to put this head back on its body. But where could it be? Keep this card in front of you. Take a fate token from the stack at the start of each of your turns. If the stock is empty, take this card. So, this is kind of the, you know, the, it's a nice thematic story-based way of having, you know, a round track, having a timer, having uh, pressure put on us. So, at the start of each of my turns, this will have to happen from now on. So my first action, we remove this now because it's been searched. It's not there in the deck anymore. I can take my second action now, so I still can't move anywhere, but I can search to open this door. You'll see the doors here. They are this, it's, it's, it's a really nice little thing that's, you know, rather than just being tiles, you wouldn't think that it makes much of a difference, but then being this little, uh, these little trays, it's nice having the start of the walls and things, and it's nice having these clip in, you know, the, the, the jigsaw way that something like Imperial Assault would do is very nice, but I do like the touch of having these things in there, and it has the tokens slotted in based on the map of the scenario that you set up that show you which card you need to get to search this door, and it will usually describe what you found on the other side of it. So I will grab the card with that symbol. And so, door. This door was opened several years ago by the tomb robbers you were tracking. Oddly enough, they were careful to close it again, as if to prevent other people from entering. Or leaving. So, we go into this room now, and yeah, you might find surprises, you might find enemies, you might find other things opening up as you explore these things. But for now, we have just found this room. So this room is now available for us to go into. I've had my two actions. I searched the token here. I went, I searched the door. I opened the door basically. And so now that is the end of my turn. So Marty as Rebecca starts with his turn and he is going to move a brand new action. You move from zone to zone with an action. And the zones are basically these squares. You can see this room here is quite big. It's two zones and the white line, uh, delineates that so marty is moving from the start zone here to this room and so he can now search the door straight away but i think he's going to search the token that's in front of him so i will find the green card from the deck and it's another event tomb robbers left a chest behind in a corner of the room they probably couldn't get it open roll two inspection dice and log the results so these white dice are the inspection dice. So we roll two of these and you know, there's, there's some conditions for if we roll certain symbols. So let's see what we've rolled here. We've got the book and we've got the fate symbol here. Now, whenever you see this, you can choose to take a fate token in order to change this to a, fa a face of your choice. So for the options here, if you roll at least one cog, take this card. If not, take this card. But there is also something else. Now, I have already filled in uh, this from when we played it. 
but there is a chart in the scenario that corresponds to the symbols that you're rolling. So we would cross off one of the symbols in the book row here to show that we got that symbol when we were inspecting. I could change it to another symbol because if we, if we complete this column, we find a mysterious object and we take this card and find out what it is. If we complete either of these rows, we're going to get money, which we can use later on. And if we complete either of these rows, we'll get experience points, which can be used to upgrade our characters later on as well. So there is, you know, the, the stuff that's on the cards is influencing what you want to get, but also the symbols that you need to complete rows and columns in this book. And there are other scenario specific things based on other scenarios that will have more symbols to get, uh, more surprises in store, just in the, in the tutorial, not the tutorial, the prototype ones that we've played so far. So Marcy didn't roll one of these. I think he is going to take a fate token, though. And he's going to change this to a cog. So we would note down now a book and a cog in the, on the page in the book. And so Marty can now take this card to show what the event is. So the event. At the bottom of the chest, you find many pieces of incalculable, incalculable historical value. Roll two inspection dice and log the results. So he gets to roll again, and he would mark these down on the page as well. So that's an X, but another cog. So that's two cogs now out of the, it's actually four to complete the row in this scenario, but getting closer and closer to it. You call your teammates over to show them what you found. Put the other explorers in this room, which is great because that saves me a move action. So Marty's actions, he moved, he searched, we get rid of this token now, and that is the end of his turn. So it comes back to me. It's the start of my turn, so I need to take a fate token. So there are only seven left in the supply now. And so I don't have much choice unless I want to go back outside. No, we're not quitters. We're going to search this door. So I need to find the card with this symbol on it. Luckily, it's right at the top here. It's a door. The door opens onto a dusty corridor. Inside, several scarabs are crawling over the lifeless body of a tomb robber. Always, every single time, almost saying Tomb Raider. So put four scarabs in this room as shown here. So two in each zone of the room. So the minis go out here. And we don't have to worry about them just yet, but we will quite soon because as soon as we step into the room with them, we're going to get a card that determines their behavior. But yeah, we want to show things off. So let's be brave and walk into the room with the scarabs and the search tokens. And so there are multiple scarab cards. You pick one at random as soon as you first go into a room with a type of enemy. Pick one at random, and this is going to be the behavior of the scarabs for you. So they've got one health. At the start of your turn, something will happen. So put two scarabs in another zone containing at least one explorer. If you can't, put two in your zone. So that's not great. That's going to make more and more arrive. Uh, and certain actions that I take will have different consequences for me. So if I try to search while there are scarabs there, I'm going to take a scratch and scratches. I've only got three scratches. A fourth will give me a permanent trauma. Uh, so yeah, that is going to happen in the future when I try to take actions. And it also tells me what happens when I try and attack the scarabs as well. For now, though, nothing happens because that's my second action. Marty, his first action is going to have to be to come in here with me. And so he is going to have to draw a scarab card as well. There's no start of turn effect because that happens right at the start of our turns. And so this is going to influence his actions now. So he moved in. He can search, but there are two scarabs in here. He would take a scratch for each one of them. So I think he is going to do some fighting. So when you fight, you grab two combat dice. And based on your results, it shows you what they're going to do. So Marty rolled, unfortunately, an exclamation mark, which does eliminate a scarab, but Marty takes a scratch. So one out of four possible damage. And this one, does he want to take a fate token to be able to change this? So probably uh, a tick, so he would be able to just eliminate a scarab. So if Marty does that, I think he is going to do that. So that is another fate token, so we're being a little bit reckless with these. He's going to change that to a check to get rid of the scarab. And now we're not in a room with scarabs anymore. These get turned face down. So you don't draw a fresh one when you encounter scarabs again. It just gets turned around when it's active again. So there's no start of turn effect from scarabs. And as soon as we move into a room where we would encounter scarabs again, we turn them face up. So 
Marty's actions, he came in and fought, and now it's back to me. I need to put another fate token on my character. <laughs> yeah, running out here. But uh, now we can do some searching, or I could go straight in and try and do some combat over there. Now, I... It's true that I don't have uh, I don't have any scratches, so I could go over and start doing some combat, and Marty could do some searching here on his next turn. Yeah, let's just do some searching. I could do two searches. Yeah, I could be a bit selfish. So I'm going to search this one first, so we remove the token. And what have I found? Item, backpack. So this goes in my backpack. A first aid kit, enough to treat one injury. So put this card in your backpack. You can discard it at any time to trigger its effect. Remove a trauma from an explorer in your zone. So this would go into my backpack box here uh, to be used in the future when we've taken too much damage and we'll get traumas. Next, I will do the other search token here. So get rid of that and get the card for it. And I found myself a whip. Perfect. Perfect for the, uh, the Indiana Jones in me. We haven't found the snakes yet though. So we have a whip here which lets me reroll one of my fight dice if I wish. And maybe I do wish. So that's going to give me a bit more freedom in the combat, especially if I roll the red crosses, which just give you a, a scratch for each scarab in the zone and don't eliminate any scarabs. You probably want to reroll that. My two actions were just searching, so Marty is going to have to venture forth. He flips over his scarab card again, and now Marty can, you know, he can move and he can uh, do special moves and search and stuff, but he's going to take scratches for doing it. So I think he's going to fight. So he hasn't got any weapons. So he just gets to roll with his second action, and he got... Oh, he's not being very lucky, is he? So we resolve them in order. So first the ticks, for, then the exclamation marks, then the crosses. So first of all, he eliminates a scarab, but takes a scratch. And then for this, he takes a scratch for each scarab. There is one scarab left in the zone, so he takes another scratch. So yeah, one more, and he's going to get a trauma. But luckily, I do have that first aid kit. Uh, so there's nothing he can do now, so I'm going to come in here... With my first action, I'm going to fight, but I do get to re-roll a die if I don't like what I get. Oh, I need a fate token, don't I? I never forget that. And what do we get? Oh, exclamation mark and cross. So I'll re-roll this one, because this is the worst possible one. And I just get the same again. So I, with my exclamation mark, I, the same as Marty, eliminate a scarab, but take a scratch in the process. So scratch on there, eliminate the last scarab. Now, I moved and attacked, so I don't get another turn, but we can put our scarabs face down now. We haven't been in a situation where we've had the start of turn effect uh, go off yet, which is quite nice. So next up, Marty's already in the room, so he can search the remaining icon in here. And so we have an event. You find the decomposing body of a tomb robber. <laughs> Nearly did it, tomb raider. <laughs> Under a thick layer of dust. Roll two inspection dice and log the results. So we roll these, and that's two magnifying glasses. If you roll at least one, take this card. If not, take this card. So let's grab that one. It's the scarab card. So we have you, uh, item backpack. You pull an antique medallion carefully out of the robber's pocket. Roll two inspection dice, log the results, and put this in your backpack. So this could uh, come into play later on. So I don't think we want to spend any fate tokens to turn them into anything. But now we would have, what's that, two magnifying glasses. So all we would need now is to roll a torch. We could take a fate token for that, but I, I don't think we have uh, enough to spare. If, if, we, if we do roll a torch in future, though, we get that mysterious object, and we'll find out what it is. But this would get tucked away in Marty's backpack now. That was only one action, so his second can be to open a room. Which one does he want, the one in front of us or the one to the left? The one in front's got more search tokens. This one's gone, hasn't it? So let's do that one. That's uh, the, uh, the Anubis head. So he's going to search this one. So we have door. The walls of the room are covered in strange hieroglyphics. They tell a story that is very different from the one taught at university. In the middle of the room, you see the body of another tomb robber. Roll two inspection dice and log the results. Hopefully we get a torch here and I can show you what that item is. No, it's, uh, it's mask and book. And uh, we've got four fate tokens. Marty's going to do it. So uh, we'll flip this one to a torch. So we would check off the column and I can reveal to you what the mystery object is. We didn't get this in our playthrough, so I don't know. It is. Item backpack. It's an ankh. The, this sacred object seems full of mystical power. Put this card in your backpack. You can discard it at any time to trigger its effect. Stop an explorer from taking a trauma. 
which is great for Marty because he's about to take a trauma. So that's all nice and good. So we can open this room up now. Back to my turn. Take a fate token. And I am going to venture forth into the room, I think. So let's go up there. And with my second action, which one will I search? Let's search the snake's head. So I need the green snake's head card. Bear with me, bear with me. Doing it one-handed. And oh, it's the very bottom one, isn't it? Search the whole way through the deck. I found myself a crowbar. Let's you roll one additional die during fights. So I would get to decide, you know, which ones I want to equip. You can reorganize your equipment is part of the turn structure, but in the in the tutorial, you're really only worrying about your actions. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I'll keep the the crowbar out for my. I would I would have to do it next turn, but I do have the crowbar in my backpack for now. So Marty, what does he want to do? He could look at the room. Yeah, let's let's have Marty try and open this room. So he needs this card. Okay, this door is locked. If any explorer in this zone, including you, has a crowbar, take this card. If not, put it back into the pile. So unfortunately, Marty's action was wasted. And so what's he going to do? I think what he's going to do is go up here and get ready to search this token. And then I will come out with the crowbar and search the door. Yeah, otherwise he's just going to be waiting around doing nothing. So first action searched, second action he moved. Back to me, I need a fate token. And I'm going to come out of here and search the door, which means we see the same card as before, but now I can look at the next card. There is a pedestal in the middle of the room. On it is a statue missing its head. The floor of the room is covered in scarabs. Put three scarabs in this room. And so I came out, I searched, it's Marty's turn. Marty's going to see what this token is, because I want to show everything off. A golden statuette has been left by the robbers. It has no historical value, but could be worth a lot of money. You can take the statuette and pick up this card, or put it back in the pile. Let's take the statuette. Item for your backpack. When you pick up the statuette, you reveal an opening, and a horde of scarabs comes rushing out. Put a scarab in each zone in the game, and then put this in your backpack. Oh, Marty. Yeah, he should not have done that, should have just let it be. So we have one in every zone, which means I'm in a zone with a scarab now. Another one in that zone. I think I've run out of minis, actually, for scarabs. So this gets flipped over because uh, we're actually each in a room with scarabs, aren't we? So that was Marty's first turn. What's his next turn going to be? He doesn't want to... He's going to have to fight, then, the scarab in his room. Two checks, though, which means he can just kill that scarab. And his start of turn effect goes away. I'm going to reorganize and get the crowbar out because, yeah, we want it to prize open. Oh, I've already pried open the door, haven't I? Didn't. Now for my turn, I start my turn with the last fate token. Remember, it's for four players. You probably have more fate tokens for two players. But I'm just going to have to dive in, I think. And take some trauma, but I'm... Yeah, we've got no fate tokens left. We've got no time left. I'm going to have to move... When I move and there's scarabs around, oh, actually, first of all, we do the start of turn effect. Put two scarabs in another zone containing at least one explorer. So I've run out of minis here, but uh, for the purposes of the prototype, I'm going to have to put two in there with Marty, which means Marty's start of turn thing is going to activate on his turn. Put a scarab in each zone in this room. So I take a scratch for each scarab in the zone because I'm doing a move. There's one in my zone. So I'm moving into here and there's four scarabs in here now. To search, take a scratch for each scarab in the zone, but it's my last action. There is no more time. Unless, yeah, Marty, his actions would be move, move. He shouldn't have looked at the statuette. He should have just ran straight out. So I'm going to have to now do a search, take a scratch for each scarab in the zone, which is four. So one, two. I'm going to take a trauma. Now, traumas come from this shuffled deck here. And so I have got a sprain. Take an injury after each move action. And so these go down here and slot into our player boards. And yeah, you, you can only get one of each type restricting each action. And yeah, you don't want too many of them because yeah, they stick with you. And you don't you want your characters to stick around, don't you? So that's gonna affect me now. So I, I took I had two and I needed four more, so I'm gonna end up with two towards the next trauma. Although Marty could. Where's his, where's his thing here? He can discard it 
at any time to stop an explorer from taking a trauma card. So I could actually get rid of that trauma, but I've shown you what one was like. And Marty has spent his ank to, to stop me taking that trauma, which is nice of him. And so we're searching the very last thing in the game. The event. There is a decapitated statue standing in the middle of the room surrounded by a mysterious light. The body seems to match the head you found early on in your adventure. If any explorer in this zone has the decapitated head, I do, take the card with the eye on it. If not, put the card back. So yeah, if the wrong person came in here. So where... So that card is... The end. Luckily, as soon as the statue's head is back in its rightful place, they retreat, scurrying out through the cracks in the walls. Remove all scarabs from the game. This adventure has corroborated your theories, and it's just the beginning. It's time to record your expedition in the logbook and go back to camp to study your discoveries. Read the outro. Oh, it's the outro plus, by the way. There are stickers in the game. You know, if we'd had a negative outcome of this scenario, which might have happened, hint, hint, if we'd, if I'd had to take a fake card. Actually, the stock was empty, so I would need to read the bad ending. But I showed you the good ending as well. So, yes, this is terrified. We run away and we read the bad ending. So, for the purposes of, I would imagine for two players, we'd have another fake token and I'll read you the good ending, eh? So, uh, no, you weren't hallucinating. You and your companions were indeed attacked by mechanical scarabs. The discovery of this tomb is the first page in a, new, in a new chapter of history. This theory is not the insane ranting of a sick mind. You are now certain that this distant region of Egypt was once the cradle of a civilization with technology far more advanced than anyone ever imagined. Gripped with feverish excitement, you have a hard time falling asleep. Take the credits and XP, connected to the check marks on your symbols here, and you get a new tent. So in the back of the book here, we have unlocked tents. So this was the tent number one that we stick on here. So we can spend the money to give explorers reroll tokens, maximum one each. We record our XP that we would have gained from our symbols down here. And, you know, we have a tent that gives us access to level one and two XP cards. And it's a, it's a shared stock of XP, but each character has their own ability deck and they can spend experience points to get these things. So Rebecca could get the permanent ability to, whenever she rolls a magnifying glass on an inspection die, she gets an extra magnifying glass. So even better for filling those rows and columns in. She can get nimble for one XP. When she takes at least one scratch, she can give one to another player in her zone. Uh, strong voice, she can use her support action from two zones away. Fighter, when fighting, she can transform the mask, you know, the, the pay a mask, pay a fate token to change it to a face if you like you can she can change that side into two check marks which is brilliant that's two xp though for that and this one not available with the tents that we have so far but a three xp ability she can get cobra speed when fighting if she rolls at least one tick she can perform a move action for free so yeah you can enhance your character's abilities through this obviously you know i've got a limited selection with just the prototype and it's got this uh this scenario and then two more scenarios in it but yeah, this is the basics of Archives. There is also your, your special action. So depending on who you are, your special action here can be affected by items, can be affected by traumas. But uh, mine as uh, Frank would be as one of your actions, you can attract all enemies that are one room away into the room where you're standing. So that would, uh, yeah, if, if Marty had had the, the decapitated head, I could have stood over here pulled all the scarabs away and Marty could have ran in there and uh, not taken so much punishment. Marty's is, as one of your actions, you can allow an allied explorer located in your room or one room away to do one of his actions. So Marty should have done that, really. Uh, yeah, it, it does say not to use those in the, in the starting scenario, but yeah, Marty could have been stuck in there or just completely ignored that, stayed here, and allowed me to move in there so I would have had more actions to fight and stuff, although there would not have been nearly as many scarabs around if Marty hadn't grabbed that statue. But... Hey, there we are. I think I've shown you everything that I've got in the... Well, I haven't shown you the other two chapters. Spoilers. But I hope this has given you a good idea of what the gameplay in Archives is going to be like. Obviously, it's a legacy game. More stuff's going to be expanded, more types of enemies and things that you, you only really saw the scarabs in this. But yeah, this hopefully this gives you a good idea of the essence of it. You can find out more on the campaign page if you'd like to know what I think about it. That's coming up on the screen shortly, or you can go right now in the description if you'd like to. 
If you would like to see more playthroughs, I've done over 300 of these. Hopefully you will find another one that is to your tastes. Thank you very much for watching this, though. If you'd like to support the channel, then I do run a Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash slickerdrips, and you can get involved. You can help me keep making these playthroughs. You can get votes in the videos that come up, all sorts of stuff. Your support will be massively appreciated. Thank you very much for watching this, though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.